Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, my name is Megan. I'm a gardener and I'm just kind of sharing my gardening journey this year with you guys on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. So as we've been heading into the growing season, I've been doing kind of a seed series. Um, so I did a video on seeds that I didn't like and will never grow again. I did one on my favorite seeds that I think I will always grow forever and ever. And today I have a seed haul. I'm so excited. I love seed hauls. I feel like it's Christmas all over again. I'm so excited for all the new things that I'm gonna grow this year. So I'm gonna go through all these with you. And probably my most common question I get is where do you get your seeds? So I'm gonna show you some of my favorite places that I get seeds from. So I'm gonna start with my regionally adapted seeds. What I mean by regionally adapted seeds is these are just seed companies that are local to me and therefore their seeds are going to be regionally adapted to my area. That means these seeds are coming from the south. They have been regionally adapted to withstand the heat, humidity, pests and diseases that we have here in the south. And sometimes if you're having trouble gardening or you're having trouble with a specific variety that everybody else seems to love and grow fine, but you're having trouble with it, it could be that you're buying it from the wrong place. For example, say you're trying to go Cherokee purple tomatoes and you ordered it from a company that is up north when you live in the south. And maybe you have friends up north that are like, I have no problem growing them. But here in the south, you're like, I don't know, mine's not doing so well. It could be that you bought them from a northern company and those seeds aren't regionally adapted to perform well in the southern area. Now, I just say that to keep it in mind. It's not a rule or anything. I buy seeds from all over. I don't really care. I do try to buy the things that I know I really need to hold up very well. I will definitely try to buy from a southern company, but if there's something unique that I want to try that, you know, these my local companies don't offer and I just really want to try growing it, I'm going to buy it from that company that may not even be local to me, if that makes sense. Like I'm always going to try to grow something unique that I want to grow wherever it's from, but I always try to cross reference with my local seed companies first. If they have it, I'm going to buy it from them. If they don't have it, then I'll just go ahead and buy it from wherever. But anyways, I just had to explain that. Now let's finally get into it. All right, first one. So this is from Kid Seed Company. I love this company. I support them every year. It is adorable. They're this family. They own a small farm, I think, and um, their kids are heavily involved in the whole process from harvesting the seeds, packaging them up, and sending them out. I just think it's so wholesome, and I just... I love them so much. I've been buying from them for almost three years now. Everything I've ever gotten has been exceptional. Never had issues with germination, disease, anything. They wrote me a little card. It says, Dear Megan, your continued support means so much to us and we we are so happy that you enjoy growing our seeds. We included mache because it's a favorite green in our garden and we hope you enjoy it too. You can plant the seeds now. Happy growing. Warmly, Thomas, Laura, Laszlo, Mina or Nina, that might be Nina, Natalia and Yona. Is that not so cute? So that's them and all of their kids' names. And I just, I don't know, I can't. They're a small family business and I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but they're located in North Carolina. So they are local to me. So first we have this pepper, it is called Beaver Dam Pepper. And this says it's a large Hungarian pepper with rich flavor and moderate heat. And they have a lot of really cool Hungarian varieties. I think that their family is Hungarian. I think I've seen them say something about that somewhere on their website. And sometimes they'll bring seeds back from Hungary, which I think is really cool. So I'm excited to try this new pepper. Next we have this Murasaki Sweet Pepper. I've wanted to grow this for a while. I looked for these seeds last year and I couldn't find any. They were all out of stock and I just missed my opportunity to grow them. So I'm excited to grow them this year. They're just supposed to be these really long, slender, totally purple, almost black sweet peppers and I just think they really they look really unique and I'm excited. Next is this Hungarian heart tomato. This is another Hungarian variety and it's called Hungarian heart because it supposedly grows in the shape of a heart which is so cute. It says it's a heart-shaped heirloom variety from Hungary that was first seen in markets around Budapest in 1900. It says it's great for fresh eating, paste, and canning with very few seeds which appeals to me because I really want to up my canning game this year. I kind of want to focus on preserving. I want to preserve a lot of my harvest this year to kind of help me go through the entire winter next winter. Um, this winter I, I ran out. Um, I didn't preserve enough food, but yeah, next year that's the goal to preserve enough for winter and to not run out. Hi, are you joining? This was the free seed they threw in there. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. It's matcha or mosh. 
I don't know, but it says it's a wonderfully nutty tasting salad green that grows in cool conditions and is never bitter. Also called corn salad. Okay, I've heard of corn salad. I and mean, they said that I could plant this now, so I actually might just throw some of these in the garden later today and see what happens. I've never tasted it before, but I'm excited to try something new. Lastly, I got a few flowers from them. I got Mexican sunflower and just like a, a poppy assortment. Poppies are one of my favorite flowers in the world. I just love them. I love how delicate they look. I ordered Mexican sunflower seeds from like just a random Etsy shop last year and the seeds sadly didn't germinate at all and I wasn't able to grow them in time. So this year I'm not missing my opportunity because I love these so much. The flowers of the Mexican sunflower are so velvety. It's hard to describe when you touch them. If you're a sensory person like I am, like you love to just be out in the garden and pet your plants, I love to do that. Um, you should definitely grow Mexican sunflower because they are just so fun to touch. Like they're just so velvety and the pollinators love them, especially if you are raising monarchs. Monarchs love the Mexican sunflower. So I'm excited to give this another shot this year. Next, I'm gonna open this package from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. They are located in Virginia, so still the Southeast. Really love Southern Exposure. As their name implies, um, they kind of specialize in seeds that are made for the South. Us Southerners, we have a hard out here, okay? We have the humidity, we have the heat, we have the pests, we have the diseases, we got it all, okay? We, it's like a battle, it's like a battle. So like I was saying before, if you can get some seeds that are adapted to this environment, you're gonna come out one ahead. Okay, so first up from Southern Exposure is the Rosella Purple Tomato. This is a dwarf tomato. It has a really pretty pink hue to it. And I got it because it's a dwarf, um, because I wanna grow in the greenhouse. And my greenhouse is a little bit small, so I have to kind of grow dwarf varieties in there or else they will get out of control. Dwarf tomatoes are also perfect if you're balcony gardening or if you just don't have a lot of space in general. They only get to about three feet tall, which is totally more manageable than like an indeterminate that can just keep going to like nine or 10 feet tall. <laughs> Next, I got this purple potted asparagus bean. So these are a yard long bean. I think they're very similar to the Chinese red noodle beans that I grew last year, but these look a little more purple. They look darker and I don't know, they just intrigued me. So I thought instead of the, um, the red ones that I grew last year, I might try the purple one and see if I like it any better and just, I don't know, just give it a try. Next, I got this cucumber called Homemade Pickles. This is a pickling cucumber, and I chose this because it's supposed to be especially resistant to downy mildew, which I had a huge problem with last year. Usually the pickling variety that I plant and what's been my favorite so far is the Boston pickling, but these are supposed to be like that, but with more disease resistance and more suited to the South. Next, I got this ever tender okra. So this is a spineless variety just like Clemson Spineless, um, but it's supposed to be more tender. So with Clemson Spineless, I had a problem last year where it was growing so fast and I couldn't harvest it quick enough. I swear I would see the pod start growing one day and I would come out the next day and it was already like just huge and tough and inedible. And I would just be like, how, how is this happening so fast? I can't harvest it quick enough. I couldn't eat it quick enough. So when I was looking through seeds and I saw that this is ever, it's called ever tender because it is supposed to stay tender for longer and not toughen up quite as fast as Clemson Spineless. I was like, okay, I've got to try this. Maybe it won't toughen up as quickly and maybe it'll actually give me some time to harvest and eat it. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to try this one too. And it's spineless, so if you're allergic to spined okra like I am, this variety is spineless, so you can grow it. Okay, I'm really excited about this one. This is something new that I've never grown before in my life. Peanuts. Peanuts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to grow peanuts. I've never grown them before. I don't even know how to grow them. I haven't even like researched it yet. This variety is called Fast, I'm gonna butcher this, Fastigiata Pinstriped. They're, pin, they're called pinstripes because they have, they're striped. They have like a stripe. And I, I think that's so cool. And again, these are supposed to be especially suited to the Southeast. Um, so I'm really excited to give this a shot. If you have any peanut growing tips, please leave them for me in the comments. I have no idea what I'm doing with peanuts, um, but we're gonna give it, we're gonna give it a shot. Next, I got a few new tomato varieties I wanna try out from Wild Boar Farms. If you haven't heard of Wild Boar Farms, the owner, his name is Brad, he just makes the most beautiful tomato varieties ever. If you go on the website and you search through all the tomatoes, 
it's mind boggling. It's overwhelming. It's how could I possibly choose what to grow? I just want to grow everything. I want to grow all of them. Some of the ones I was very pleased with last year that I bought from him that you saw in my other video was the Sweet Cream and the Atomic Fusion. I grew those. Those did really well for me and that's what got me hooked on Wild Boar Farms. First up, I got Indigo Apple. These are supposed to be highly productive. They are like black on top, red on the bottom. Small tomatoes, like a little bit bigger than a cherry. I just thought that they looked very interesting. And I also got the chestnut chocolate. This looks just like the indigo apple uh, now that I think about it, but I think it's a little bit bigger than indigo apple. These are supposed to be really productive and disease resistant. And I have also seen a lot of gardeners grow these and, and sing their praises. So I, I was kind of influenced to buy these from other gardeners. Again, they have a dark top, they have a lighter bottom, but the bottom, instead of red, it's more of like a that chocolatey color, kind of terracotta color, very interesting. Next, I got Cherokee Rose. So this is the, supposed to be a variation of Cherokee Purple, but it's a little bit lighter color. It's more of a dusty rose color. It's supposed to have a fuzzy, skin and be kind of matte, which I thought was interesting. So I just, I don't know, I was curious and I wanted to try it. I love Cherokee purple, so I was like, maybe I'll love Cherokee rose, I don't know. And then lastly, I got blue gold. Um, so last year I, I grew blue gold berry and I wasn't super impressed with it. Um, this, it looks similar to blue gold berry, so it's got the, the blue on the top and then the yellow on the bottom but they're a bit bigger, like they're more regular tomato size rather than cherry like the blue, blue gold berry was. I'm hoping that these are gonna be better than the blue gold berry. And Wild Boar Farms is not local to me. I think they're in California, but they're just one of those places that they have such unique things that I will buy them anyway. I have a package from Fruition Seeds. So Fruition Seeds is one of those companies that is nowhere near me. They are in New York, so this is um, a Northeastern company and they grow seeds that are specifically adapted for the Northeast. However, I still buy from them. The owner, Petra, I love her. I just, I love their company. I love the information that they give you for free if you sign up for the email newsletter. It's actually very informative. It's so cool. The owner, Petra, she does a lot of videos. Just listening to her speak, it's like a warm hug. Like, I wish I knew her in real life. Like, she just seems so nice. So I got a few things. Let's start with um, the tomatoes. So I got this dwarf lemon ice tomato. So like I said before, I was looking for some dwarf tomato varieties to grow in the greenhouse, and I came across this one. Seems very interesting. It's this light, light, almost pale yellow color. On the back, it says, one of our favorites, perfectly named, meaty, heart-shaped, four to six ounce fruits with divine sweet tart balance, and very few seeds. It goes to three feet tall and is perfect for containers, which is exactly what I'm looking for in the greenhouse because I'm gonna be growing these in um, in grow bags. Next tomato, I was influenced to buy. Somebody had commented on one of my TikToks. Um, if you like paste tomatoes, this is like one of the best and they swear by it. So obviously I had to go and buy it and I wanna try it out. It's just called Italian heirloom paste tomato. Um, but this person said that they're the best paste tomato she's ever grown. And on the back it says, our favorite paste tomato, ideal for sauce and sandwiches alike, impressive abundance of 12 to 20 ounce fruits with rich flavor and tolerance to late blight. And like I said, my main goal for this year is preservation. So I'm gonna be doing a ton of canning and I'm really excited to see if this lives up to the hype. If you're watching, commenter, I cannot remember your name and I'm so sorry. If you're watching this, I hope you're not lying to me. It better be good. <laughs> Next, I got this winter squash. It is called Gouda. I'm really excited about this one. It is a um, cucurbita machada, which means that it is resistant to squash vine borer. And it's basically an improved Long Island cheese is what it says. So on the back, it says, if you love Long Island cheese, meet Gouda. Smaller, sweeter, creamier. So I'm excited to try growing this. I have a really tough, tough, tough time with the squash vine borers. So I'm hoping that this is resistant enough and I'll finally be able to get a decent harvest of winter squash, hopefully, I don't know. Next, I got this sweet pepper called Sparkle. This looks absolutely beautiful. It looks so stunning. It's this purple pepper. It looks like they kind of start off like a cream color and then they kind of develop into purple um, and then they finish off as a red purple 
I don't know. It just, it, it looks so pretty. And last year I really focused on hot peppers. I grew so many that I still have a ton of hot peppers dehydrated in my cabinet that I don't really need to grow a ton more super hot. So this year I'm focusing more on my sweet peppers. So I'm excited to grow that one. And another sweet pepper, this one is called collage. Another beautiful, beautiful pepper. I always, I'm a sucker for pretty peppers. Like I'm just a sucker. If it's variegated, if it changes different colors, if it, I don't know. I just, oh, this actually looks really similar to candy stripe, which I've grown for the last like two years or so. Um, but it looks like it has a little bit more color than candy stripe because it kind of looks like they can be the green and white like candy stripe but then they can change to orange and purple and just like every color every color of the rainbow are on these things and i i love that it looks like the leaves are variegated as well just like with candy stripe but it looks like the leaves can also have a tinge of purple and your regular candy stripe doesn't have purple in there. It's just the green and white. I think they're gonna be beautiful and they are supposedly very tasty as well. It seems we have sadly reached the end of my little haul, but I'm so excited to grow all of these new things. I'm so excited, especially about the, the peanuts, which I've never grown before in my life. I'm excited for the new tomatoes and peppers and just new varieties. I always like, I love trying new varieties. I'm gonna put a little list here of the rest of my favorite seed companies in case you wanna go check them out. And I'll also link all of the seeds that I showed you here in the description in case you wanna check them out too. I'd love to know if you guys have grown anything from this haul. Let me know if you loved it or hated it. <laughs> or if you have any suggestions on how to grow something, especially the peanuts. And keep an eye out for some seed starting videos coming soon because spring is coming and here in zone 7B, I'm starting um, my summer seeds in the middle of February, so all of my tomatoes, peppers, etc. I was gonna do spring seeds this year, but I just don't think I'm going to because I still have a lot of things that overwintered from the fall that are growing strong out there. Like I've got my kale, um, I've got onions and stuff, like just stuff that I planted in the fall that's continuing on in the spring. And honestly, my things like broccoli and cauliflower, I don't really like to seed start those. I kind of just like to buy them as transplants. Um, just because like, I don't know. I don't know why I hate it. I just, I don't like it. I like to buy my broccoli and cauliflower and cabbages transplants. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the little haul. I hope you guys are having a great week. And if you don't already, follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.